love Christmas globes, and so I decided to paint one for a Christmas card. But I wanted it to be fast because, well, when you're making cards, you need them to go fast. And yet I like detail. So this card has some detail, but it also has some tips to help it go faster. Number one, use a glass to do your drawing. We want to get it kind of centered. You know, just hold, forget that whole rule of thirds thing. And then we're going to point the, pe the pencil towards the glass and keep it pointing towards the glass all the way around. And then I'm going to use this smaller glass to help me figure out the base. And again, since it's centered, just going to do a little. Then I'm going to just decide how deep I want that thing to be. And then leave an even space here so that you know how far it is and put a dot at each end. And then we're just going to do this make an opposing curve from that dot to that spot. And then we'll make this base like this. And we're going to chop off that little corner. I like these kneaded erasers because they don't mess with the sizing. And now we want to put the tree in. And I'm doing the same thing, making it sort of straight. But I'm not even going to use the ruler. I'm just going to put it beside the ruler sort of. You know, I wasn't touching the ruler. And we'll draw our snowman. I want him to be a round snowman. Then we erase the top of that. Well, you might need a smaller eraser for that. You erase the neck and erase the bottom. It's still easier to just draw a whole circle to start with. Now, we're going to make a scarf, so that will just put a straight thing there. And this scarf is blowing in the wind. And then this is going to be into some snow. And at the top, we want his head to be back towards the back of his head a little bit because we want him to be looking up. And he's going to be looking up here at a Christmas ball. And we have some snow. You can put some hills if you want. There we go. We have our drawing. And then second, we used a ruler for the tree and for figuring out the bottom of the base. I'm also going to use a ruler. And I'm not really planning to necessarily put a table. But I want to know where one is there because I don't want this thing floating. You don't have to re worry about remembering all of these things because they can be found in the comments. Tip number three is to use masking fluid, and that helps to speed up painting time later. I'm just going to use this little brush, and I have my brush cleaner, and I'm going to run it across there because I don't want to ruin my brush. I do always use less expensive brushes for this. And then I'm using the Incredible White Mask by Graphics. It is the best frisket I've ever used. And I'm going to fill in this ball. I'm going to fill in the white parts, the parts that I want white on his hat. And I'm going to put a carrot nose, and the carrot nose is going to point towards that bulb so that it looks like he's looking in that direction. Tip number four to speed things up is to use a big brush for your background. So I'm using this Princeton Neptune, and I want there to be a little bit of light from one side because I just think it makes paintings more charming. So I'm starting with some bright yellow, but don't worry, I won't leave it quite that bright. And I'm going to put in a little bit, I think I'll go with the red but I'm going to dab it on my sponge because it's pretty intense. And then get some more if I want it. And I'm going to go around a bit with these colors. And they, they're going to turn darker when I add my blues. And I'm just going to soften that edge there until I'm ready to blend it all in. So I'm painting wet on dry. Wet brush, brush, dry paper. And now I'm taking some of the Thalo blue and I'm mixing some indigo with it because it's very loud looking otherwise. But I don't want it quite as black as the indigo. And I'm going to go over on this side. 
Now you have to slow down a little bit when you go around this ball. And I turn my paper as I go, because if the point is pointing away from you, you can get a neater, crisper edge. Okay, I've dried it with a hair dryer and it, oh, I forgot something with my frisket that we have to have. This really makes it easier in the end and faster is if areas that you want to. The light is coming from this direction so I'm going to have most of it from this direction. And I'm putting some in that's shaped. It, it's got a flat edge up here. And then I'm putting some plain ones in and on this side. While we're waiting for this to dry, I wanted to take time to thank the people who are supporting me through Buy Me a Cup of Coffee. I have a class on there if you're interested. The link is in the description below. And now I'm going to start with the blue. And I have still mixed some indigo with this thalo because the thalo is quite loud. And I want this side to be a little bit darker than the other side. And so I'm just going to get it darker because it's away from the light and we do want this globe to look round. I don't want to color into the hat so that it has keeps its color and then I want to get the back of his body and I don't want it too dark there because I'll probably make his body darker there. Same way, just define the front of the hat with the blue and the front of the face. And up here I'm going to put just a bit of yellow. That's the lights hitting it, and of course I don't want it that bright, so I'll add some of this orange-red color. Now I've dried that in between, and I'm going to make some of these hills pop out a little bit. So the first, uh, the first one is this right here, and this goes, this area goes right up into the snowman, but I want it to be whiter where he is. I'm gonna just soften that edge. Tip number five is to dry. Use a hair dryer and dry in between layers. It saves a lot of time. And while that dries even more, I'm going to get some brown and it's going to be darker on the left than on the right. And now we get into the fun part. I'm going to mix some blue with my green and make a more wintry looking green. And then I just use that as my guide, that little uh, stem that I had. In fact, you can put it in in your color and then you can it gives you a chance to check out your color and it's a little bit louder than I want. Now the tree, you kind of want to start with a point up there. And then we want a branch that comes past here a little bit. But you kind of work in triangles. There's tri trees, you know, they get bigger as they go down and you just have a lot of branches. You can have more than one color in there. So if you've mixed a color and two colors blend together, that's okay. And then you just get wider as you go down. Let's put a little bit of shadow under the tree. This is Charlie. I always paint Charlie the snowman. He always has a red hat. And I'm going to start with the back because that's away from the light. And then he's going to get lighter as he comes as he comes forward. And you might notice I've made him slightly a different color of blue. And if you decide that your tree is too um, not dark enough, then you just can go back and do another layer and just not go out quite as far, or just stick with the bottoms of the branches. And it makes it have more dimension. And it doesn't take very long. 
Got out the dryer again, and we're going to paint the red hat before we take off the frisket. Now I use a lot of orange in my red, this especially this Skyrit Pyrol, because the paper is not completely white. The reds tend to darken. One thing we need to do is um, under his hat would be a shadow. And if we don't put that there, when we take the frisket off, the edge of his hat won't really show. I take a brush, have a tissue handy, and just have wet water on your brush, and just get rid of that sharp edge. I haven't really made a table on here. I dried it some more because if you try to take the frisket off before it's ready, it ruins things. So this is a frisket remover eraser. All you do is rub it across here. And this kind of frisket is so lovely, it just comes off. And then you can just feel it and tell whether it's all come off or not. Now back into my orangey red and put this scarf on. Okay, and let's do the Christmas ball. Now we'll take some of the brown that we had, because this guy needs arms, and I want to make this arm reaching up, and this arm reaching higher up. And the orange carrot nose, that I'm going to put some gamboge with a little bit of orange, so it's somewhere in between. And I'm going to roll my brush. I'm actually going to roll it on my sponge so that I have a good tip. And the last thing we need on the snowman is the eyes. I'm putting one eye over pretty far because he's looking up. And I always have smiling snowmen. It would be charming with some bouquet. I'm just going to do them with a stencil brush, dip it in the water, squish it into the sponge to get some of it out, and just do some tissue. They'll be softer than when you do it with a stencil. Tip number six, cut out the ball and use this as a mask. You just want the snow on your snow globe, not all over. Now I'm going to use my stencil brush and some bleed proof white for my snow. Always practice. Always. Every time I start again, I practice somewhere. You can make it as very snowy or not very snowy as you feel like it. Then lift carefully and let it dry. Okay, let's take the tape off. And now, since my bleed proof white is still wet, I need to go easy. Somebody asked me to show all of the tape coming off. So this is for you. I might not always do it, but I'm doing it for this one. I'm just taking out the parts where I pick at it. And there we have a fun little snowman. Cut out a um, cut out a 
I don't know. What do you call these things? 